I totally I'd like that actually. Um, but for instance, with that song, because it's like that's a song that's very personal to me. Should I be like establishing context for the people that are listening? Or, or, uh, like... Yeah, go for it. Plus, it uh, be yeah. linked in his stuff below, which in the future. Oh, people... nice. Okay, cool. Right on. Um, so, like, I do, I have done over the past couple of years, like, a lot of sort of educational songs in a way. It's like, here's this philosophical concept or topic. Let me, let me spit it for you. And, like, it's almost like it's very dense. It typically has been. And recently I've been realizing that the missing ingredient and the place where I'm going to find my simplicity is making it about something that's real. It's still about philosophy. It's still philosophical. There's still sciencey parts in that song where I'm explaining, like, brain chemistry and stuff. But it's grounded in a real personal and real painful experience for me. And that's why it feels like a real song, not like a lecture that's using music to get itself across. And there's a very subtle distinction between those things. And like, I think I'm like finally landing on it. It's like the muse still has to be in charge and you're bringing in like knowledge and stuff. In my case, like I'm bringing in didactic information. I'm bringing in philosophy I'm bringing in academic themes because that's who I am. But it still has to be grounded in what the muse wants, and what the muse wants is to express your heart, you know. And so it was like that's sort of my theme recently is like how do I marry my braininess with my heart? How do I start listening to my heart more? And I realize that that's sort of like a, you know, sort of mystical and maybe vague way to put it, but no, I think that's right. how I feel. I think it's a, it's a really interesting way to put it, because um, a lot of people fear that simplification is going to cost them their artistic integrity. Is my belief so that the, or that adapting your art in any kind of way from what you've been doing or pivoting or whatever is going to like change something mm -hmm. in a negative way when often it's just going to make you a better artist and i mean i think that's a, to me art has to do with communication if you're not like this is my views and i know it's not complete because there are artists who create art for the sake of art and they die and nobody knows they make art that shit is baffling to me so it's hard for me to even put it into the like it's hard for me I, I just want to acknowledge that but for me art's about communication you have ideas you bring them to life in an artistic way you achieve a goal and it's for somebody even if it's just for yourself and, totally. and at the end of the day that's that's all it is and everything else is just fluff you could have like the most bullshit song and everybody loves it for some reason and I mean like quality it could just be like fucking like Bjork has a song she recorded like on a mobile fucking tape recorder at a live event while she was performing went into the bathroom went outside of the venue and that made the album and I never saw music wow. the same again I was like oh you that can do that amazing. that's Bjork right like she's pff, she's the queen of the right. artsy weird shit yeah yeah totally so yeah what what else are you yeah. up to though? If we only have like ten minutes left, then what else are you up to so that like you can get um, an idea of your near future and shit to watch for? Yeah, so I am. Um, I mean, I got this grant from End of the Week. So shout out End of the Week. This shout is how this is week. how we've we've met each other. And um, uh, the Versus Foundation, honoring the life of Vice Versus, who is just one of the what, the patriarchs of of End of the Week here, and and uh, has was a mentor to all of us throughout his life. Uh, this, this, this foundation that got established in his honor um, gave me a grant to pursue a project that I was originally calling the Hip Hop History of Philosophy. I want to do a whole history of philosophy through songs. Um, and it's kind of changing form. It was originally going to be like an album. I think now it's more like a YouTube playlist that just like almost an encyclopedia of like if 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 musicality and like rhapsodic rap is your way of getting information like here's how you could get a primer on the history of western philosophy or you know there you go so i'm definitely going to keep on adding to that um that and i have an album coming out um at the end of the summer it's not exact date yet but hoping to get it done by my birthday on august 11th or have it ready to release by august 11th and that'll be some like more more personal um just lyrical stuff lyrics for lyrics sake songs for songs sake type of type of stuff do you plan on performing a lot? I do. I actually am performing a lot now already. Um, so I also play with uh, with Hilla the Killa as Nate and Hilla, and we were busking today at McCarran Park in Williamsburg. We're doing a compost tour, um, and so <laughs> we, we, we're going to tour all the different compost drop-off sites. I don't know how composting is in Montreal. You said some of your neighbors have, like, bins that they can okay. – does the city pick them up? Okay, so, like, there's – 
brown bins that you're supposed to yeah. put the composting in and then my belief is it goes to a composting cycle where they basically chuck everything if it's not filtered correctly by us so very mm. little of the composting will make it to the composting on some human error shit on some they don't like to filter things i don't know the logistics of why's or whatnots i just know that's how it right. is with recycling so why would it be different with composting you know and that my neighbors weren't the best at composting in our building because um my girlfriend is super into compost like super like nice. she wrote out this thing a handy helpful tip guide for like the door so i could know that eggshells are compostable and that pizza boxes i think are not and then shit like that right like because the city made the resource but like yeah, no, I don't even, there's a lot more garbage than compost up in my building right now. But I know that when we switched it up, like, it was like, oh, fuck, if you're actually composting correctly, a good, like, 50% of your garbage becomes, like, compost, just like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, totally. Oh, pizza boxes are, right, she's giving me shit. I did it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't remember. Yeah, well, I'm glad that you have a brown bin program. It, New York City just brought theirs back, and so, like, one of the big reasons that we were getting on our activism um, grind with this was that in the middle of the pandemic, New York City canceled its composting program. And so all the composting that was happening was by virtue of local community composting chapters that that like sort of, you know, raised uh, their own degree of involvement to keep it going. And like you had to like save stuff in your freezer and then you'd come drop it off at a different composting drop off location someplace in the city. And there's various ones at different parks or different corners and stuff like that that operate on certain days. And so what we're going to do is do a tour of the different drop-off sites. Like, you're like, yo, you live in Queens? Like, we're going to be at this one on this day. We're going to be at this one on this day. And just do a, like, tour of the city busking at these different sites um, to sort of just give them some love and celebrate the hard work of the people that make it still possible, even though New York City canceled its own program. That's so, serious. That's serious. I'm pretty sure Montreal, like, I know the apartment buildings, it was just made, like, mandatory for them to have them. And I know the, the the houses have had it for a bit, but, yeah. So, like, education music about recycling to me, or or even composting, sorry, is seems super relevant and, like, a hot topic. And I like the fact that you were describing how if the fruits are underneath the fucking plastics, they can't compost because of lack of oxygenation. I didn't know about totally. that shit, so I learned about that yeah, in yeah. your song. And um, so you guys busk around, but do you do like um like like let's say would you come to Montreal and do some shit? Yo, I would absolutely do that. Yeah, I mean like as stuff is starting to reopen, like I'm I'm extremely excited to be playing shows. I I play a lot at uh, a club in Brooklyn called House of Yes, and so they're going to be reopening soon and like they are important to me because it's been a place to do not just like regular shows but also shows where I can kind of like um break it down like where i'm like not just rapping but also like explaining a concept and then going like in and out of the song and like creating these sort of interactive performative environments which is something i'm really interested in doing because it's it suits um my my way of performing and uh yeah yeah, yeah i want to rock as many shows as i can I'm doing a lot of online shows but i'm pretty ready to start doing it in front of people again yeah serious though i like the fact that you're productive with this and pushing it through we definitely have to have a part two there's a lot that you're doing that a lot of people could learn from in terms of just how to be successful with it how to grow from i would it. love to do a part two I, i've really enjoyed this conversation you're you, you have a really i just love the idea of starting with the very beginning <laughs>